So we're going to keep working uh, with conversions and we're honestly going to probably be on conversions probably the, for the rest of the month, but honestly, probably another three weeks. I think it's working uh, a little bit better in math than the first week of science um, because in math so far and what I've done for science now is like I give you one task for two days and I think that's working out better. So it does mean that we're going to move a little bit slower, but I honestly think that uh, I think it's going to benefit us. So for conversions so far, we've done customary conversions and we've done metric conversions. So King Henry was metric. And the customary conversions that we've looked at so far were for the gallon man. So gallons, quarts, pints, cups, and ounces. But we still have some customary conversions that we need to get through. And originally, like you can see them underneath all Leo's artwork behind me on the wall, I had wrote them down, but that wasn't working. So this is like my fifth time trying to record this. Um, I think what I'm gonna ask you to do, if you can get me your math notebook if you can get me maybe two different colored pens or like a pencil and a pen a pencil and a marker or a pencil and a, a highlighter or a color pencil whatever you have i'm gonna use just my normal one pen and a red pen just so that i my eye can see that there's something different now i'm gonna be making arrows so um just so it looks different so not everything looks the same. I'm actually gonna have you write down uh, some of the conver conversions that we're gonna need. So like, if this was a perfect world, and I will obviously put this up for you guys on Schoology, but if this were a perfect world, then we would go over, this is your reference sheet. And I know that you guys have seen them before because whenever we've done like district testing, a lot of the times we're, we're supposed to give you the reference sheet. And I always tell you, especially if you test in my group, you don't need anything off of this. It's just, you can write all over it. And a lot of you that test in my group would use it just as like scrap work paper. Well, now we actually need the information. So everything on there, not everything, but some of the ones that we do need, I'm gonna ask you to write. So let's say that this is your notebook. I want you to be in your notebook where you have a blank page on both sides because I'm gonna write down some of the conversions over here and then we're gonna work out examples over here, but I think it's gonna be easier if you can see them right next to each other. So let's go ahead on this side, let's just go ahead and we'll label this just conversions. And then, um, yeah, so let's do this. I'll give myself a bullet point and then I'll just put customary conversions. So when we're working on this, remember you guys, if you, if I'm writing too fast or talking too fast, just pause the video, write down what you need and then unpause me when you're ready. Okay. When we're working on this side, there's going to be a missing piece. So something that has a, a red question mark, something that's blank, and then you're going to need to find the conversion that matches what you have. So I think it might be easier for us if we write down things on both sides so that we know exactly what we're looking for. So something that's a customary conversion that does not fit within the gallon man would be that one foot equals 12 inches. Okay, uh, I don't really want to skip a line, so we'll just go on the next line. Let's say one yard equals three feet. Okay, remember, if I'm writing too fast, if I'm talking too fast, just pause me, and when you're ready, you unpause me. Let's put one mile equals 5,280 feet. I'm going to write down that one mile equals 1,760 yards. I have two more that go here. I'm going to put that one pound equals 16 ounces. And then for right now, I'm going to put one ton equals 2,000 pounds. OK, 
okay? So gallon man was a customary conversion when we practiced those. These are just all the other customary conversions that do not fit within the gallon man. But we also need to be able to practice time conversions. So remember, if I'm going too fast, pause me. Write down what you need, and when you're ready, you can unpause me. But if you're ready, I think I'm going to skip like two, three lines, and then I'm going to give myself another bullet point. So if my top bullet point said customary conversions, why won't this focus? Okay, then the bottom one, I'm going to write down time conversions, T-I-M-E. And these are like, you know, they're, they're pretty simple. These are like one minute equals 60 seconds. Okay, one hour equals 60 minutes. Remember, if you need to pause me, then pause me. I'm going to write down that one day is 24 hours. This is an H. One year is 365 days. And then one year is 52 weeks. Okay. So remember, if you need to pause me, you can pause me. And when you're ready, you unpause me. So we've got customary conversions and the time conversions that we're gonna need. On the other side, I'm gonna label that this is lesson five. And then I'm just gonna put up at the top as a heading, I'm gonna put customary conversion practice. The only important thing that I really need you to focus on is we have to practice, you gotta line up your units. So there really is no trick here, okay? When we did King Henry, the metric conversions, if I would say there is a trick, I would say that the trick was you were just looping in the letters and however many times you looped in the letters, that's how many times you moved the decimal point. When we were doing the gallon man, the trick was whenever you figured out what letter you were looking for, you just were gonna count that letter however many times. So here, you guys, there really is no trick. It's just we need to focus on lining up our units. So we'll start here. Let's say that this is example one. Let's say some amount of feet equals nine yards. So here's where I'm gonna take my, my little red pen and I'll just put a question mark on this side. This is what we're trying to figure out. So how do I wanna say this? This, all this really tells me you guys is I'm gonna look for some conversion on this page that uses the same units that I've written down for number one. So feet and yards. So I'll come over here. This says foot, which is one foot and feet. They actually do go together, but this is foot in inches. And that's not what I needed because I needed feet and yards. But then the next one, I have yard and feet. Well, that does match exactly what I need, yard and feet. So once you find the conversion that you're looking for, this is the one you guys I'm gonna write down because it has both units that I have in my problem. Yards and feet or feet and yards. So I'm gonna write down right underneath it on the other side that my conversion is one yard equals three feet. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna write down one yard equals three feet. This is still all for number one. We haven't done anything yet. All I did is I looked for the conversion that I needed based on the unit names that were given to me in number one. 
So I knew I had to find something that said feet and yards, and this does feet and yards. Even though this has an S on it, it's the same thing, you guys, same exact thing. So this is the conversion I'm gonna use to figure out my missing piece. If my hint to you, or the only trick, real trick we even have here, is that we need to line up our units, I cannot use this side. And I cannot use this side because this is my side that's missing. So even when we were doing metric, when we were doing gallons, I was kept telling you, you have to start on the side where you have both the numbers and the unit or the numbers and the words. Still the same thing. So all I'm given here where I have the number and the word says nine yards. When I ask you to line up your units, I mean, I want you to put the yards with the yards. So I'm not gonna write nine yards on this side of the equal sign. I know it's on this side of the equal sign up top, but I can't stick it underneath feet because then yards and feet, they wouldn't be the same thing. So I'm gonna take what I have, my number and my unit, my nine yards, and I'm gonna put it right underneath the yards. I'm pulling it right out of number one. So I'm starting where they have the number and the words and I'm just lining up my units. It's like a fraction, they have to go together, yards and yards. So I'm trying to figure out how many feet nine yards would be equal to. I'm gonna use this top conversion, the one that I pulled from this side, and it's gonna tell me exactly what I need to do. I can see that when I'm going from yards to feet, my number is getting bigger. My number is going from a one to a three. And I think everybody would agree with me that three is a bigger number than one. So if my number is getting bigger when I'm going from yards to feet, it's going from a one to a three, it's getting bigger. Guys, that means I'm multiplying. Anytime it's getting bigger, I'm multiplying. So then you have to mentally ask yourself, well, what am I going to multiply by one that's going to get me three? And I hope that you realize that one times three is three. That tells me right there, you guys, anytime it's going from yards to feet, all I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the yards by three. I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom that I did on the top. So just like with fractions, whatever you do to the top, you have to do to the bottom, or whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. If I'm doing yards to feet and I'm multiplying by three, the bottom is still going from yards to feet. I still am gonna move from the yards to the feet. I know the yards, I don't know the feet. But you guys, if yards to feet is times three, then that's what I'm gonna do on the bottom to figure out what I need. So then all you're doing is nine times three. So if you don't know the times table, if you need to draw a picture or write out nine plus nine plus nine, or do nine times one, nine times two, nine times three and make a T-chart, that's fine. But if you know that nine times three is 27, then that means that in nine yards, you guys, there are 27 feet. Now, trust me. These are definitely not as easy to see as King Henry or Gallon Man. And I totally know that. I'm not going to make this like something that's crazy, crazy. I just want to get started. So let's say for number two then. Let's say. Let's say for number two, some amount of inches. Is equal to seven feet. This is where I am going to put my little red question mark because this is the side that I don't know, but I do already know one piece of information. I know that I need to find myself a conversion that's talking about inches and feet. So I'm gonna look on this side. I know that this says one foot, but foot and feet, they do go together. So this top one right here, this is the conversion, you guys, that I'm going to use. And I'm, I can only use that conversion because this is talking about inches and feet. This is talking about inches and feet. 
This one says feet, but because this side doesn't say inches, it doesn't work. This one says feet, but because this side doesn't say inches, it doesn't work. It has to be the same unit for both parts. So the conversion that we're going to use says one foot equals 12 inches. So this is for number two. I'm going to write that down. And remember, we need to line up our units. So I can't start with inches because that's the side, you guys. I just, I don't know that part. So that tells me I'm going to start with seven feet. Well, foot and feet, I know that they don't have the exact same letters, but they are the same. I know Mrs. Williams has talked to you guys about singular and plural. Singular means it's just one. Plural means it's more than one. Well, that's what foot and feet are. Foot is singular, one foot. Feet is the plural of foot, more than one. So I know that they don't have the exact same letters, but they are the same thing, foot and feet. I'm going to line up what I have. So I know I have to start with feet because that's where I have the number and the unit name. And I'm going to take those seven feet and I'm going to line them up on the side for foot. We were trying to figure out how many inches were in seven feet. <coughs> Sorry, you guys. Mm. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. Okay, so in seven feet. There we are. Um, I can see here, sorry, that I'm going from a 1 to a 12. But because I'm going from a 1 to a 12, my number is getting bigger. 12 is obviously bigger than 1. But because my number is getting bigger, you guys, that means I'm going to multiply. So then you mentally ask yourself, what can you multiply by 1 that's going to get you to 12? Well, it's 12. 1 times 12 is 12. Because on the bottom we're given the feet, that means we're still starting at the feet. So because on the bottom we're still going from feet to inches, that means we're going to still multiply by 12. Whatever we're doing on the top, because we're working in the exact same way, we're doing the same thing on the bottom. Now, I'm sure that a lot of you don't know 12 times 7 off the top of your head. That's fine. So you're going to just try it right off to the side. Well, 7 times 2 is 14, so 4 is on the bottom, 1 is up top on a plate, it's a leftover. 7 times 1 is 7, plus an extra, gives me 8. But because 7 times 12 got me to 84, then you guys, that tells me that in 7 feet, there are 84 inches. I want to try one more where we're still working in the same direction, because once you realize what you're multiplying by, then that's what you're going to do on the top and the bottom. Whenever we start moving in the opposite direction, then we're going to use the opposite operation. But I want to try one more. Let's try it. We'll, we'll, we'll try it. Let's say this is number three. Okay. Let's say for number three, we're trying to figure out how many weeks are equal to six years. Okay, remember, if I'm writing too fast, talking too fast, whatever it is, pause me. I know that we're not given this information, but what we are given is weeks and years. Those are the two units that they want us to work with or the two units I want you to work with. So you look at your conversion sheet. You're looking for weeks and years. Well, I don't see anything about weeks and years up here, which tells me I'm going to have to go down to the time conversions. So minutes and seconds, not weeks and years. Hours and minutes, not weeks and years. But on the very bottom, I see that this says year and weeks. So that tells me that in order for me to solve number three, this is the conversion that I need to use. So I'm going to pick up my pen 
and I'm going to write this conversion right underneath number three because that's what I need to use. So I'm going to write down that one year is 52 weeks. You guys, we cannot start with weeks because this is the piece that we're missing. So that tells me that I'm going to start on this side where it says six years. But remember, we need to line up our units. I can't line up years with weeks because it's not the same unit. It's not the same name. It's not the same word. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to line up the years with the year. So we're looking for six years is equal to some amount of weeks. If you can see when you're going from years to weeks, your number is getting bigger. You're going from a one to a 52. And 52 is obviously bigger than one. But because the number, you guys, is getting bigger, that tells me right there, we're multiplying. So then you mentally ask yourself, what are you gonna multiply one by that's gonna get you right to 52? Well, one times 52 is 52. Because on the bottom, we're still working in the same direction. Because we're still going from years to weeks, okay? We're still moving in the same direction. That tells me I'm still gonna multiply. I know that you don't know 52 times six off the top of your head. Neither do I. So we'll do it off to the side. Six times two is 12. Two's on the bottom, one's up top on a plate, it's left over. Six times five is 30, and 30 plus one more is 31. So that tells me that in six years, there are 312 weeks. All you're doing on these types of conversions, you're either gonna be multiplying or we're gonna end up dividing. But the only reason we haven't divided yet is because on number one, number two, and number three, we're still moving in the same direction. Okay, so we're going from yards to feet. We were given the yards, we needed the feet, we're going from yards to feet. Inches to feet, or feet to inches actually, because we have one foot equals 12 inches, so feet to inches. We couldn't do the inches, we couldn't start there, we had to start at feet. So feet to inches, still, we're gonna multiply. We had one year equals 52 weeks. So anytime we're going from one to 52, it's getting bigger, we're gonna multiply. Years to weeks, we're still multiplying because we're still moving in the same direction. Actually, I was gonna go ahead and I was gonna jump to dividing. I don't think I'm gonna do that. I think we're gonna stick with, um, I think we're just gonna stick with multiplying right now until we get the hang of that. So let's say, eh, we'll try it. We'll try it, you guys. All right, I'm gonna flip the page, which just means that I'm gonna be moving back and forth. Um, let's say that this is number four, you guys, okay? Let's say some amount of hours Yeah, some amount of hours, sorry, I was trying to think, is equal to nine days. So this tells me, this is obviously what we need to find, but this tells me that because the two units of measurement that I'm given are hours and days, that I'm going to look for a conversion that's talking about hours and days. So I know that that would be a time conversion. So I'm gonna find one that's talking about hours and days and the one that I see right here says that one day equals 24 hours. So because it has the same two units of measurement, that tells me that's the conversion that I'm going to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna write down my conversion. One day equals 24 hours and I have to line up my units. I'm not given the hours. That's where my question mark is. That's what I'm trying to find. But I am given the number and the unit name or the number and the word for this side, which tells me I'm gonna start here with days, but I'm gonna line up what I need. So I need to line up the days with the days. I can't line up the days on the hour side. They have to be on the same side. 
So I'll go ahead and I'll write down my nine days. And then here's where you guys start thinking. If you're moving from a one to a 24, is your number getting bigger or smaller? Well, my number is getting bigger. I'm going from a one to a 24 and 24 is obviously bigger than one. But then because I'm getting bigger, you guys, that tells me I'm going to multiply. And I know that 1 times 24 will get me to 24. So on the bottom, we're still starting at days. We're still going to end up at hours. So because we're still going from days to hours, even though we're on the bottom and our arrow is going to loop, make a bottom loop instead of going arching up top, we're going to loop down on the bottom. We're still going from days to hours. We're still moving in the same direction. So that tells me because I'm still moving in the same direction, whatever I'm doing up top, I need to do on the bottom. So if I've multiplied by 24 up top, then I'm going to multiply by 24 on the bottom too. So I know that if I'm doing 24, I don't know 24 times 9 off the top of my head, and I don't expect you to either, but it would be easier if I put the two digits up top because I don't want to put two digits on the bottom and only have one digit up top because then you have to do mom and then let dad come home. That's too much. So I'm going to put the two digits up top and the one on the bottom. So 24 times 9 is going to get me the same answer as 9 times 24. 9 times 4 is 36, so 6 is on the bottom and 3 is up top. 9 times 2 is 18, plus 3 more would be 19, 20, and 21. So that tells me that in 9 days, there are 216 hours. I think we wanna, I want to do two more because at this point I'm almost at my, my 30 minute mark and I think that's where you guys are like, ah, your videos are so long. So I want to do two more where um, you practice finding the conversion that you need. So let's do this. Let's say that this is going to be number five. Let me find a good one. Hmm. Sorry. Okay, let's say some amount of yards is equal to three miles. I'm going to go ahead. Remember, if you need to pause me to write down what you're looking at or what our number five is, that's fine. You can pause me, unpause me, sorry, when you're ready. But if you're ready, I'm going to leave you right here. We wrote down some amount of yards is equal to three miles. I want you to pause the video and when you know what conversion you need, I want you to unpause the video. We had written down one yard equals three miles. But you guys, because our unit names are yards and miles, that means we need to find a conversion that also has the unit name yards and miles. So if this is what you're looking for, you're looking for miles on one side, yards on the other side. But the only one that's talking about miles and yards is right here. So I hope that that's the one that you picked out because that's the one that you do need to be able to use. So. If we are going to, we're going to write down one mile equals 1,760 yards. And we're going to write that down because that's the conversion that's using both of the units of measurement that we're given here. They match miles and yards. Now we obviously can't start with yards because that's where our question mark is. That's where we have a blank, which means you guys need to start here at miles. On your own paper or in your own notebook, I want you to pause the video because I want you to line up your unit. Show me where you're gonna put those three miles. You unpause me when you're ready. Okay. 
because we're starting at the miles, you guys, I can't put the miles underneath the yards. It won't work. You need to put the miles with the miles. So I hope that you went ahead and you put the three miles underneath the one mile. We're trying to figure out how many yards three miles are equal to. Let's just focus up top, okay, because that's the conversion that we wrote down. You are going from the number one to the number 1,760. Anytime you're going bigger, your number's getting bigger, guys, that's where you multiply. So I want you to figure out what are you multiplying by? We're going to multiply by 1,760 because 1 times 1,760 will get us 1,760. Are we still moving in the same direction on the bottom? Are we still going from miles to yards on the bottom? Yes. We're starting at miles and our question mark is the yard. So we're still moving in the same direction. But because we're still moving from miles to yards, because we're still moving in the same direction, that means we're going to multiply by the exact same number. Whatever we're doing up top, we're also doing on the bottom. Now, I don't expect you to know this off the top of your head, but I do expect you to be able to do the multiplication off to the side. Put the bigger number on the top. You need to take this number, instead of doing three times this, do this times three. Put the three on the bottom. Do the math. Figure out how many yards are equal to three miles. Unpause me when you're ready to go. Well, I know that three times zero is zero. I know that three times six is 18, which means eight's on the bottom and one's up top on a plate, it's a leftover. I know that three times seven is 21 and 21 plus one more is 22, which means two's on the bottom and another two's up top on a plate, it's a leftover. I know that three times one is three and three plus two more is five. So you guys right there, that tells me that in three miles, there are 5,280 yards. We're gonna do one more um, where we are practicing and we're gonna keep moving in the same direction. So this is gonna be our last one uh, for this. I was gonna say something, but I'll, I'll save it. Okay, so let's say this is number six. Okay. Let's say our last one here, you guys. Let's do another time conversion. Let's say... Let's say how many days are in four years? I know that this is where our question mark is, okay? But we do know something. We know right now that we're gonna look for a conversion that has the same two units of measurement that we're given. So days and years. So I'm gonna flip and I'm gonna focus on the time conversions. I want you to pause and then unpause when you know what conversion you need. I'm asking you how many days are in four years? You should have found me the conversion that's talking about days and years. And right here, it says year and days. But because it has the same two units of measurement that I'm asking you about, then that tells me that this is the conversion that you guys would need to use. So I'm going to take the conversion that I need, which is one year equals 365 days. And I'm going to write this down. We cannot start with days. 
because that's where our question mark is. So that tells me that we're gonna start over here with years. But remember, the important thing here is that we need to line up our units. I cannot put years with days, they're not the same words. My years goes with year. So right underneath where it says one year, I'm gonna write down four years because that's what's in my problem. We're trying to figure out how many days are equal to four years. So you focus on the conversion up top. You're going from a one to a 365. So you're thinking, is my number getting bigger or is my number getting smaller? But if you're going from the number one to the number 365, your number is definitely getting bigger. And anytime your number is getting bigger, you're multiplying. So one times 365, will get me to 365. Because we're still moving in the same direction, because we were going from years to days, we're still starting at years and ending at days, we're still moving in the same direction, you guys. So because we're still moving in the same direction, that tells me that I'm still gonna multiply. Whatever I'm doing up top, I'm also gonna do on the bottom. And I don't expect you to know the multiplication off the top of your head, but I do expect you to be able to do it on the, on the blank side of your notebook. Put the bigger number up top. Instead of saying 4 times 365, do 365 times 4, because it's going to get you the exact same answer. I don't want you sticking three digits on the bottom. It doesn't make sense. Put the big number up top and the little number on the bottom. Well, 4 times 5 is 20. So zero's on the bottom, two's up top on a plate, it's left over. Four times six is 24. 24 plus two more would be 25 and 26. Six is on the bottom, two's up top on a plate. Four times three is 12, that's 13 and 14. Well, right there, you guys, that tells me that in four years, there are 1,460 days. Okay. I think what I'm going to do here, I was going to have this two days. Honestly, I might even extend it into three days. We'll see how uh, my next video here goes. But really what I would like for you to do, if you are like, oh my Lord, I have no idea what this woman's talking about. I know it's kind of a long video. You guys know I love to talk. So I'm asking you to go back and watch it again if you need to. If not, the only other thing that I'm going to stick on today after you watching this is just to do um, maybe even just one, one exit ticket problem for me just so I can see, is this making sense? And I'm going to make it, we'll even do one of the ones we've already done. I'll just change the numbers, but I'll keep the same exact unit names on both sides. So it'll be easier for you to look at your notes to find what conversion you do need. And um, yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. That makes sense to me. So I'm going to do that and we'll, we'll try it, okay? All right, 